It's Wednesday, the 26th of August. Good morning. Back in 1974, a German technologist, Dr. E. M. Schu e. F. Schumacher, wrote a book with the title that became something of a slogan, Small is Beautiful. With prophetic insight, he argued that big technology that serves wealth and capital rather than people creates inequalities and inhumane working conditions, exploits precious resources and causes environmental damage. Of course, there are big organisations like the United Nations and the National Health Service that are there only to serve the good. The slogan serves to remind us that small actions, small deeds that have humanity at their heart, are vital for human flourishing. I think, for example, of Octavia Hill, who in the 19th century, after hearing an address about poverty by Charles Kingsley, bought three houses in the wrongly named Paradise Place, Marylebone where large families lived in squalor in single rooms. And there she instituted a rolling program of repairs and improvements that gave tenants dignity and a pride in their homes. Or I think of the Reverend Chad Vara, who in 1965 started a telephone helpline at St Stephen's Church, Walbrook, that grew into the Samaritans, which of course is now an international network of trained volunteers who listen to the voices of the desperate and in the proceed, process save many lives. More recently, I've been reading about Benjamin Kialo, a committed young Anglican in Kenya who concerned about environmental degradation, including deforestation in the area where he lives. He began to plant tree seedlings and is now cultivating thousands of young trees, which he sells on at small cost to neighbours, parishes and dioceses to promote the protection of the local environment. Small, yet beautiful. Today's world is paying the price of huge exploitative systems. Yet as these examples remind us, where and when humanity is put first and the world's life is regarded as precious, then it can make all the difference. The Gospels describe the life of one man, Jesus, who, because he was filled with compassion and of love, affected many, many other lives that in turn passed on his true human values to others, rather like the lifeblood that brings oxygen to the human heart. They offered, and still offer, hope to a desperately needy world. Small is beautiful, and we too are invited to be part of that chain of communication, expressing sometimes in words and sometimes in action, ideas and deeds that, though they may only be small, express the love of God and the concept of the fullness of life. And show the world what those things really mean. Today's prayer is a verse from a hymn by Harry Emerson Fosdick. Lord, cure your children's warring madness. Bend our pride to your control. Shame our wanton selfish gladness, rich in things, and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Amen. <laughs>